everybody. Thank you for joining me and thank you so much for the really, really nice response to my Q&A vlog video. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that style of video and just some of the different questions we covered. I mean, you gave me the questions, so thank you for the content. But yeah, that was really fun and I really appreciated your kind words for that. And in this video, we're going to be getting ready full face style. Nothing's on but my skincare right now. And the idea here today is that I'm using products that each have, I think, a really specific advantage. Um, there's some certain thing in particular that I really like about each thing I'm putting on. I'll explain as we go. The first thing I'm going to use is my Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. So I like to use this in the primer phase of makeup. I wear the shade Light, and I think the distinct advantage to this product is the thinness, okay? It's giving me like a streak of very sheer glow across the skin. Think Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. However, this one is truly so thin and light, and I think it makes an excellent primer. See, it gives the skin that glowy finish, but it does so really without any added weight. It's like the perfect little sneaky glowy step. This would be for the person who wants their foundation to look a little more glowy, but their skin maybe can't handle a ton of thick layers of moisture, you know, to get to that point. For me personally, I can handle some juiciness on my skin, so I like a L'Oreal Glotion, and I like the other options like either the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter or the e.l.f. dupe for that. All these things are good, but those are a little thicker actually, a, a teeny bit richer on the skin than this stuff that just goes on thin, 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 but still gives you that uh, kind of glow effect under makeup. Or be really casual about it and have this be like your base look. You can do that too. Now the foundation I'm going to put on top of that, I've talked about this pairing before, but my L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. This stuff is like, I randomly like shook this the other day, but it's down to here, down to the bottom. I wear this in 2-3 Light. Love this stuff and I think the distinct kind of unique advantage to this is given the formula that it is, I think the staying power is amazing. So often the product that claim great staying power are the ones that also happen to be like a full coverage matte thing. And this one does not claim to be full coverage matte. I think it's finish is just kind of a natural finish, but the staying power is always really good for me with this. Like this always looks beautiful on my skin and wears amazingly well. So while staying power isn't the only benefit, I think it's kind of a unique benefit to this type of product. You know, medium coverage makeup, fairly lightweight makeup, and yet I feel like it wears flawlessly and lasts all day long, which is good because we got dance shows tonight and tomorrow night. See that? And that little extra glow that the primer is providing, I think is really nice. Beautiful, light, natural finish makeup, medium coverage that actually turns out to wear all day long. So that, I think, is the unique benefit of that product. The concealer I chose is my NARS Soft Matte Concealer. So it's in the little pot. I wear the shade Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. And I've always felt like the unique advantage here is the fact that this is, you know, a matte concealer. It's really perfecting, but yet it doesn't have a major dry down. And I'm not saying that you can't sort of work with dry down a little bit, like you can have a very well moisturized under eye and still make like a little bit of tart shape tape work, let's say. But this just meshes in with any look so well, like let's say you're going light and glowy or maybe even kind of barely there on your face, but you really wanna take care of some under eye stuff. You can use this, blend it in, and it just has like a flawless blend into whatever finish is covering the whole rest of your face. It doesn't look like two different worlds, but it really does perfect. Because I do think those liquidy, full coverage, shape tape variety of concealers, I think there is kind of a dry down that happens with them. They are not providing a lot of added moisture. I'm not saying this one's giving a ton of extra moisture either, but it is quite creamy, but yet it's matte, and it doesn't do a big like setting thing that makes it look like your under eyes got a big, heavy, thing going on. So I'm just using my e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush. I've been using it the entire video so far. Perfect for getting around those small areas and then kind of dabbing and buffing in elsewhere. See, look at that. That is just, I, I go a little while not using it and then I pull it out again and I'm like, wow, it's so perfect because I do want 
soft matte on the under eye. I don't want to be especially glowy in that zone because then that kind of attracts attention to all your little contours and where things are starting to maybe recede a bit and just any differences in the elevation of this zone of your face. A matte finish there won't attract attention but yet you don't want it to look super dry and that's the unique advantage here is that it just doesn't look super dry. Doesn't look dry at all frankly. The powder is the catalyst for the video. This was the thing where I was like oh this product has like a real certain purpose in my collection, I think. And it's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder. The shade is 1.0 Vanilla. I had this. I remember first using it and not immediately falling in love with it. I was thinking it was maybe a little heavy. Came back to it and I think it was when I started my era of little triangle powder puff here and decided, oh, actually I think I kind of like the way that's looking. And I realized what the specific advantage to this is. And it's the fact that it's really not just a translucent powder. It is a light colored powder. And if you really want to look light and brightened on the under eye, this will take you there. Because I feel like it's actually a fairly pigmented light powder. And it's got a sifter, little stopper kind of thing. You can open it up, you can tap some into your lid. But you know what I'm saying with this? It's got a little more actual light pigmented color as opposed to all those powders that are just translucent. Which some of those can still brighten, you know, especially if you're just kind of baking with them. I'm doing a little light bake here, just so I can make my point known. <laughs> you could use this lighter, you get a more subtle effect, but when I do this, like, I am seriously brightened, and it seems to last all day long. But it's not just a translucent powder, it is a pigmented light colored powder, and I think that's what sets it apart from the many simply translucent powders that I own. So I've kind of laid it on a little bit thick, right in an area where I want to be brightened there on the inner corner, and I went a little less with it, around the t-zone and then I can take my Morphe under eye bullet brush I can sweep away see I feel like this whole zone is looking really nice and light and bright and it's because of a truly pigmented powder being there and if you're a different skin tone then look at what makeup forever has and think you know what is going to be a shade or two up from my natural skin tone and picture the fact that it's gonna be like a little more opaque on the skin. My blush and my contour sticks. I talk about these all the time. They are my gold standard for a cream stick formula. Um, I always think about my M Cosmetics So Soft sticks and the fact that they are truly the easiest to blend, the smoothest. A kitten's here, Bisky. She just wants to roll around on the floor. She's a happy cat. But there's just so much ease with these, and yet they're not feeling greasy on the skin. You know, they're not giving a whole other finish or like texture to your skin, but just complete and total ease. Now, I have two shades of the contour stick. I have Terra and Summer. Terra, at first, I thought was like the only thing I'd want to use. It's a little bit cooler, but lately I've started pulling out Summer, which has a bit more warmth, and I think it's actually quite beautiful. So I'm going to use that today today and just swipe it on the skin. It has a glide like none other. I'm comparing this to the Mario stick, to a milk makeup stick. The Persona sticks, those are really good. Those are really close, but I mean, these just are really fantastic. They are soft. They're soft, but they're not taking your skin and making it dewy, tacky, greasy. And look, it can sit there and then you just very gently with hardly any pressure, you blend over it and it's working for you. I'm in love. And as you can see, summer is not too crazy warm. Just swipe and blend like instant chiseling. They are a pleasure to work with, a joy to have in class. This is my Sephora 56 I'm using, but you could continue using that e.l.f. Duo Complexion brush if you wanted to. It would blend this stuff just great as well. See, I'm thrilled. I love it. And isn't that color great? I love summer. I could easily go back and forth between the two. And then the blush sticks, very same thing. Beautiful texture. I've been kind of rediscovering these over the past few days. Uh, I love Venetian Rose, but I got into Baby too, which don't just peg this one as being too light to work because it's absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you. Let me get some of it going on. It's such a nice, sweet and innocent little soft, but perfectly beautiful blush color. Like it does have a lot of pigment there. Look at this soft baby pink cheek. 
baby is doing a lot, is it not? Oh, these are so fun. Makeup is fun when there's an ease about it, right? I think really all of these products I've used thus far have had a real ease, but these, you know, the specific advantage here with these that really sets them apart is their softness and blendability. Like a lot of things I've used have the pigment. A lot of things I've used have beautiful tones, but these have all that and they also just blend like a dream. Look at that cute little shade there. To round out our complexion, I'm gonna use my Essence Pure Nude Highlighter in the shade Be My Highlight because I feel the specific advantage here is it's a highlighter that's really mastered the subtle glow, okay? So if you see a swatch of this on my finger, you can see the color there, but see how the sheen is gentle? We're not talking big flecks of shimmer. And I felt like this would look really pretty on top of baby and just give the most subtle, easy little gleam there. See what I'm talking about? Oh, those two are a great little partner to one another. And I'm still feeling like I've got some glow coming through this whole look. Remember from that little primer? Just a little bit of this. We're working it up here. I love the glow. I love the brightening that gives the face, but yet nothing's unflattering. It's not attracting attention to, you know, the fine lines or whatever your problem area might be. So much ease, a really nice subtle highlight. Now the next thing I will do, I didn't really outline this in my choice of products for this video, but because I do want my makeup to last all day, I'm definitely gonna pull in the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. I mean, I think a lot of setting sprays make the claim of having wonderful long wear, and there may be a bunch of them that work well that I just haven't tried, but I can tell you this one truly does make an impact on staying power. So I kind of spray upward, a few mists. The side benefit to this is that it makes the whole look of everything seem a little less powdery, just immediately on contact, but then it does help this all last, I think, into the night. And look at the surface of the skin. We are covered, you know, we are truly covered where we want to be covered. Everything is really doing its job. Now moving on to brows, okay. I picked a specific thing for setting the brows because I think NYX Control Freak is good in a very specific way for coming out of the tube and this brush is not too goopy with its gel. But what gel is there really, really holds on the brows. So I think that's great. But you know, now that I think of it, I can't, why didn't I think of this yesterday? The Kosas Brow Pop, the square shaped pencil, the square shaped pencil is amazing and other brands need to adopt this idea. We've got so many skinny brow pencils and they're just really skinny and small. This one is like a miniature teardrop shape, but yet that square design, I mean, there's a reason why I love to reach for this and it's not just because it's the pink thing in my drawer, you know, or the orchid colored eyebrow pencil. It's because when I hold it, it's really, really secure in my hand and I can still do like lightweight strokes. I don't have a death grip on this and I think I'm gripping it so much less then I'm probably gripping the smaller pencils, just because I know it's sitting in my hand without rolling around. This is the shade Dark Brown, by the way, and then you do have your spoolie. Someday, a drugstore brand is gonna pick up on the fact that they should be making it square too. I feel like it wouldn't be a big deal to produce it that way. Maybe it would. I really don't know anything about that end of makeup, the factory and production side of things, but I feel like a Maybelline or a L'Oreal should have the funds too pull this off, a square shaped brow pencil. Keep the pencil point as skinny as you want it to be, but just package it up a little more. And I think people who legitimately have like an issue grasping things would really love this. See that? And it works. The product is good itself. You know, it's a nice, easy brow pencil, but the most remarkable specific thing about it is its shape and then the Control Freak brow gel, of course, going on freezing those brows in place. Even if it's brand new, it's never going to be over gooped and we love it. We've loved it for years. I remember doing a specific review on this product on the Express channel when I was in the other house. <laughs> it is gold. Drugstore gold. Milani eyeshadow primer. There are too many benefits for me to name on this one. You know I'm just going to put this on regardless. It is my choice eyeshadow primer above all. And then for eyeshadow today, I'm gonna use Natasha Denona, and I feel like something I've noticed as I've dug back into some palettes I haven't used in a while, something I'm noticing is that the Natasha Denona eyeshadows have really, 
really good staying power. They're really good about looking exactly the same at the end of the day as when you started. I specifically noticed that with this um, Biba palette here. I've hardly, I don't know if I've ever used this in a video. Um, it was something I was, well, oh my gosh. The black just fell out. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, go back in. Okay, I had to do a little cleanup there. To be fair, I dropped this palette um, just a couple days ago, and you know how the pans are in there, and they can come out. You can easily push them out, and they, they'll magnetize back in. Well, a bunch of the pans, like, fell out of my palette, and I wonder if that really jostled some things, but we got spot back in there. It was a good day to drop a black shadow for <laughs> It didn't like shatter. It stayed in its chunk, but um, I just kind of really pressed it back in. I might use some alcohol maybe over it to help it press in further. I don't know, but it's a real basic palette with mostly matte. Like there's a shimmer here, here, and here. Um, we do have kind of like some satin finishes in here as well. She's a nice little basic palette. I'm going to use freckle right up here, but like the look lasts all day. And I do have good staying power experiences with a lot of the eyeshadow I use, but maybe I didn't realize the fading that some shadows will give you, like Patrick Ta ones, those also last really well. But I think there's just different formulas within palettes that don't consistently hang on. And I've been using a few of my different Natasha Denona palettes here lately, and consistently the eyeshadow lasts a really long time. I would love to know your experience in the comments section. Have you seen this as well? What shadows are some of the have some of the best staying power? What shadows have some of the worst? If I'm dealing with a formula that I feel is pretty flaky going on, that's kind of my cue that it's probably gonna not hang on to the eyes as well. But I think Milani eyeshadow primer so often saves some of those colors, makes them work better than I might expect. But I'm still working with Freckle, by the way. Just getting it in the crease. I'm gonna take Tusk right down here. Doo -doo. I'm wondering if when these popped out, if I even put them back in the right placements in the palette, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Tusk is a neat shade. It's one of those that kind of helps you blend, but it's not as light as like a cream color. It's almost a little beigey. So I'm using that all over the space that's left between the last shadow I applied and the brow. And then I'm going to lay down some depth and darkness. I'm going to use this shade called Rayon right here. It looks like it's almost got a little burgundy in it. Is that a little different formula than the others? I'm not sure. It seems a little thinner somehow. Now I do have the Biba Mini palette, which I think is really nice as well. I like that Natasha Denona has created that option with her palettes, something smaller for people who just don't want or need as much eyeshadow or they just want a sample kind of. Okay, nice. Now I want to layer in something even darker. Um, let's use Seed, matte brown down in the corner. Big mirrors in these palettes really cool deep brown there and I'm not really like fully blending it even at this point I'm just like placing it on the outer part of the lid with the plan of bringing in the small pointed brush so I can sort of move it around and get that shape see really nicely pigmented and nicely textured shades can travel across the skin so just because we placed it there you could see how like it moved. <laughs> it was able to go where we wanted it to blend to. Really nice. And then maybe I want to take a little bit of tone or one of these sort of warmer mid-tones and just kind of like let it ride on the outside. Then I'm going to take Monroe right here, this beautiful shimmer. It looks like it's got just a little bit of a like a hint of a pinky tone in it as compared to shine that has a bit more bronze and I don't want it to go too far it's very pigmented but I'm making it stop at about mid lid but this has just a very brilliant shimmer to it and it's smooth it's not chunky or flaky you just like a beam there off of the inner lid. I love that. And I just think there's such a high pigment level with these. That's why we're experiencing such great all day wear seed down here. Because I can have some good long wear with even a wet and wild eyeshadow look that I do, honestly. But still, we may have some fading from time to time. These just don't seem to fade 
think they're very consistent in that way. And it also may be a different story, and you can tell me in the comments section, like if you have especially oily lids um, that can kind of fight against your eyeshadow application day to day, you know, it may be a challenge with whatever you use. I just feel like I can really count on these Natasha Denona shadows to last and last. Now I feel like doing a little winged liquid liner today and I feel so redundant <laughs> by bringing out my Sephora uh, colorful wink it felt tip waterproof liner in little black dress but it's waterproof and then it really is waterproof. They say it is and it turns out to be that way and that's the special thing about it. I just feel like I've been talking about this one a lot lately so I'm sorry if you've already heard the story but it's wonderful. Somebody asked in the comments how this compares to the one size liner pen because I know I've talked about that one having exceptional staying power too. I would say this one might beat it by a little bit, but I mean they're both great quality products. And I really like the felt tip of the one size one too. But I got no complaints with this one and it's gonna end up being a little cheaper. I'm just finding myself thickening out that line a bit at the end and then giving it just a slight gentle wing. And then I'm taking a little bit more of that dark brown called Seed and I'm just gently connecting. I'm applying very little shadow, but it kind of cleans things up right on the bottom ed edge of the liner. And just kind of like work it right into the lash line there on the outside. Boom. My mascara pick that I think has a very specific advantage is my Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. This is the best lash primer you're gonna find. If you need help with curl holding, it's a great first step. It beefs up your other mascaras, but also it can seal things off. So you can put this on as a last step and you won't experience the flaking that some mascaras are prone to doing on you. So I love this. It's the type of thing I just continue to repurchase. I always wanna have it on hand. Yep, I got a backup <laughs> waiting to go. So the way I put this on is right after my lashes get curled. It's just a small brush, it looks very basic and as you put it on it doesn't look like much but it really is helping to act like hairspray sort of and lock in your curl. Just get it on all over. It doesn't have to be a lot and like I said it's not going to look like much but it is so so helpful. We had the brightest looking bluebird at our feeder over the weekend. I couldn't believe it. She just kept like kind of landing on the little hook thing that was holding it up, wasn't stopping to eat, and then she'd go off to the tree and then she'd come back like, what is this place? Like, I think there's food here. I don't know if I ever saw her eat. She was certainly happy to be there. So yesterday was Mother's Day and I had a great day. You know, we went to church, we went out to this like Mother's Day lunch thing at a golf course near us. It was so good. And I didn't want to spend the afternoon like doing chores, so to speak. And can Bub handle his own meal prep? Absolutely. A lot of times he will like smoke the meat or whatever he's putting in his lunches week to week. Sometimes I'll come up with something for him, whatever. We just kind of work together. And this time we've been talking about doing this for a while. We've been seeing that people will order like the family meal from a place like Logan's Roadhouse or various restaurants do this. Oh, Charlie's, Cracker Barrel, you name it. And you can get like a family meal with the main meat or the main dish, whatever it is. And then like a couple of sides. So we did this from Logan's and we ordered him the four chicken breasts that it had some kind of like Parmesan peppercorn sauce. And then as his two sides, he ordered the broccoli and rice. They'll also give you a bag of rolls, but like we're talking the easiest, most satisfying, like I used every bit of the meat in the sides that they gave. I just put a layer of rice. The rice was sent in like its own little containers. Um, put that down, put the chicken breast on top of that, put my broccoli in the other little compartment and he's all set to go with the easiest meal prep ever. And there were choices. You could get like two pounds of pulled pork. You could get steak. What else was there? I want to say there was like four or five different options from Logan's. So if you're ever thinking like, I really want a shortcut this week, um, I think the cost on that was around 40 to 50 bucks. I'm putting Lawless One and Done on top of this now. Look, it's even thicker than it usually is. This is a really good mascara on its own, but Little Black Primer makes it go on with even more thickness. I love it. 
But, you know, it's not the type of thing I do every single week because, frankly, I think we can do some much cheaper meal prep than that, probably, just depending. But it sure was convenient and easy. Let me know if you've ever tried that. And he typically just takes his lunch four days out of the week. I guess they go out on Friday, but I don't know what's going on with this brow, but it felt too thin. Lovely, lovely thick lash. I'm putting Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes. For my lip today, first off, I'm choosing a shade that I think might work for a number of different situations. I'm not sure what I'm going to wear tonight to the dance showcase, but just across the board formula wise, this stuff is great. It's the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink, and this is a liquid lipstick product that still like maintains a little bit of shine. It doesn't have um, the harsh sort of dry down of a lot of matte liquid lip colors. This is the shade called Lippy, by the way. actually has kind of a nice smell. Has anybody noticed that? Is it a little bit fruity or something? But these last tremendously well and very even, okay? That's a key point, even. There can be a little fade in this color, but it doesn't look like a whole chunk has been removed. I think you're more likely to have that with different matte liquid lipsticks where it's like, okay, something's missing there. It just doesn't look natural. This, you can have a little fade with these and it still looks like for the most part, everything's there and you'll still be removing it at the end of the day. Like exceptional staying power, but look, there is a soft little bit of shine that comes off of that. And even when the shine starts to fade, you'll keep having some really good staying power. So I know I've talked about these before, so you don't need to really go on and on, but I am just taking this brush with nothing on it, but I know there's probably a little existing powder still there. And just going over some spots where I might want a little extra powder, but I'm super thrilled with this look and I know it's gonna wear so well for me today and into the night. And I think that the advantage with a lot of the products was good staying power, but just a full face of products that are standouts to me for some really key reasons. I'd love to hear if you have some things like that in your collection. Let me know down in the comments and have a great day, my friends. I will see you again very soon. I love you, bye.